What's going on everyone? Thanks for joining me here. Today we're going to be talking about night approaches. So bringing my experience from the real world as a pilot into Star Citizen and maybe I can give you a few tips and tricks on to help your flying. Oh look at this nice Crusaders Industry logo in the background. Sponsored by. You got the RSI logo shining real bright. Alright, so I'm going to step into my Reliant here. I like using the Reliant because um, uh, it's one of my only ships. Um, I don't have a lot, but hey, I like the Reliant. It's got a great panoramic view, um, and there's a few different configurations you can fly it in. So we're going to hop right into the cockpit here. This is a commentary video, and this is pre-3.10. Uh, we're setting at 3.9.1 right now, and probably a week away from 3.10. Um, so all the flight model stuff is going to be based off 3.9.1. Okay, so I'm going to hop in, start it up, and we're going to shoot an approach down to Rayari Re Deltana. But before we do that, I'm going to give you kind of a, an overview of how um, the flight control systems, specifically the throttles, I work using a HOTAS. Um, you know, if you're just using a keyboard, some of these concepts aren't going to apply. Um, but if you're using a HOTAS, you know, your throttle. Um, so I don't know what the devs call it here to the left is the bar I'm sliding up, but I think of it as like an engine trim or throttle trim. So all it's all the way down to zero on the left here. It's a little bar. show you like this yeah here we go slide it all the way I'm rotating my throttle axis it's set to a rotary switch so all the way up I can consider orbital speed halfway right here I consider notched speed okay so it's all the way up in orbital speed now so now I'm going to take it notch speed and I'll go over later why I call that notch speed or at most speed and standard speed is what I keep at the red bar that's what I call that and half of standard speed I call port speed and then all the way zero um, I call that takeoff power and the reason I kind of think of those like that is because when you have a throttle axis on your your main throttle quadrant whether if you have dual axis or not you can go zero to 100% thrust on that and you have this rotary so if you're constantly changing both of those it becomes hard when you get close to terrain to know what your power setting is to where when you throttle up what kind of speed you're going to get so right now I set my throttle trim to port speed and then I slowly engage throttle don't do the opposite if you do throttle and then try to rotate your throttle tape up then you're going to on a lot of throttles unless you've got it trimmed or um, configured right you're just gonna burst out of the dock so it's about being smooth about being um, collected so right now we're at port speed and it's giving us a good speed we're at 75 translate that over to mile per hour real quickly if you just double that they are pulling away at about 150 so that's that's pretty fast um, So, and once we get past the dock, exiting here, straight out, we're going to rotate into our space configuration. And then I'm going to target up Rayari Del Taco. And then uh, we're going to shoot this approach because um, really want to give you tips on is that night flying in particular, there's even in the real world, there's a lot of illusions that um, real pilots experience at flying at night and they do come into play a lot in Star Citizen um, and you don't have a compass heading or anything like that to orient you to know so a lot of times you're, you're flying blind so to speak alright so I'm gonna walk you through thought process what I'm thinking right now opinion it dumps you up a pretty good distance 
I kind of wish you had more roll control in Quantum, but whatever. So I'm going to orient and get configured for Atmo Flight. Alright, so I'm going to do a straight visual approach. I'm going to try to, to where I'm not going to just, I could right away just pull, spool Quantum back up and it show me where the beacon is, but you know, we're VFR, so I'm going to try to fly a visual as close as I can. I know it's somewhere up around 25 degrees, in between 25 and 20 degrees. So I'm almost at terminal speed, I'm at notch speed, um, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at notch on my throttle trim, and that's because my rotary axis on my throttle, on my thumb, it, as I rotate it through um, it has a little indention, and if you, you guys throttle probably does too, and so it kind of indents in, so it feels like it clicks into a little notch, so I call that notched speed. And I'm full power or at notched, and that's the fastest that's given me is, is that terminal. So I've got a pretty good descent rate here. Um, that's one thing I wish we had is a, um, a little bit on the HUD is a, is a vertical speed indicator to know how fast I'm falling. I kind of got to do a rough idea in my head how many, you know, every 30 seconds, how many meters I'm bleeding off. But this looks like a good stabilized descent. You don't want to come in too quick. So right now, I know that at night, it looks like a black void out there. You can't see any detail. So I'm going to cheat real quick. I don't want to overfly it and scrap the video. Alright, there's Del Taco right there. Boom. Okay, so we're going to center it up. Now I'm picking up the, the flashing beacon. So, and I'm starting to see the pad lights. Yeah, one thing that I wish about this HUD is I, I wish I could kind of turn it off. Because I'm descending as I'm look, trying to look for things on the ground. The HUD's way too bright and it doesn't really get my eyes a chance to adjust, which that's something you experience as a real pilot. You don't want to turn on the cockpit lights. Um, when you're flying at night, most cockpit lights are dimmed red. Okay, so the strategy here is, you know, safety's a big thing. You don't really just want to crash your ship straight in there, and you don't want to just fly straight down into there. So I'm just going to fly over at a safe distance, or safe altitude, and see what the configuration of the orientation of the pads are. Because um, I want to come in a, a certain way and you'll, you'll see how I'm going to do that. Alright, so I've been to Rayari a lot so I know that the field elevation, so the altitude when I'm setting parked on the pad is 628 and I know that there's trees surrounding this field. Um, so, see how I'm just, I'm really trying to control my altitude in this turn because I know if I bank and roll or bank and yaw and kind of keep it at that pitch, it's gonna it's gonna give me a good decent turn. So I'm trying to set up to come in a certain direction because I know that there's no posts, um, light posts, when I come in from this direction. But I know there's trees, and I know let's say if those trees are no taller than a hundred meters and the pad's 628, then I know if I stay, if the trees are at 728, if I stay about 100 meters above that, which is 830 or 828, then I know I'm probably good. So that's what I'm watching as I'm turning, is that I'm controlling my pitch to make sure I'm not just descending like crazy. And that's something like you practice in the real world, is straight and level turns, turning climb, climbs and turning, sense. Alright, so now that I'm centered up, it's okay to kind of bust that altitude that I set because I, I can see I'm going to clear those trees. I can't see them, but I roughly know just from experience. So center it up. I'm going to fly it down just like you would an aircraft fly it like this is a runway. Pitch down that way I'm not over the pad and then trying to descend level and I can't see where I'm landing. So I have to switch to an exterior or something. 
that way coming down like this I see my path and as I center up landing gear down and we didn't use auto land and it was just as quick as landing with auto land and out and you don't give auto land any opportunities to throw your ship into the sidewall of the hangar or something like that so see those trees in the background right there yeah so we didn't see those from altitude and into the descent um, and in the real world you have like every airport has a lot of documentation on in the notes if you pull up and, and look at like taxi diagrams or airport diagrams um, in your chart supplements as a pilot they'll tell you like what all is around the airport and what the tree heights are and every airport is documented on how high above sea level it is and it sets that so we don't have that here in Star Citizen so I'd say you have to be a little bit more cautious flying particularly at night because you, you really have very little information so we're gonna do it um, just gonna take off here show you a little technique like I um, know that there's posts in front of me so I could pitch up real high and climb out of there but then you know I don't know what I don't see so I'm going to spin around, set my throttle, trim right, and you can kind of decouple if you if you thrust up and decouple, then you don't have to constantly keep that power in of holding the the space bar or whatever. All right, so I'm going to pitch up to a decent pitch, and I'm going to try to set my throttle trim right before I engage throttle. All right, there it is. Thanks for joining me. Just a quick video on tips and tricks on night flying. Hope you guys join me again in the future.